So our worship today is focused on healing. Healing. Healing is far too important a task to be left just to the medical professionals. Yes, they are very important, <laughs> but it's far too important a task to be left just to them. Those who are treated, often in hospitals, are isolated from their family and friends. We saw this particularly during COVID. They're separated from their communities of love and support. People's bodies are often treated as mechanisms that have been broken and are in need of repair. And while this is getting better, sometimes we forget that we need to recognize the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. Now, there has been an acknowledgement of this in recent years, and paying more attention to a person who is ill and their emotional well-being and their spiritual well-being, too. And yet, the journey toward integration of these forms of nurture are far from complete. We still have a ways to go. The ministry of healing and wholeness is a primary task to which the church has been called. We've been called to this as the body of Christ. Healing lies at the center of the church's ministry, just as Jesus ministered to the whole person, so too must the church care for the whole person as physical beings as well as spiritual beings. The mission of the church is to embody Christ, to be a continuation of the incarnation in ministries of teaching and of preaching and of healing. The church is Christ's presence in the world, and we as the church are charged with bringing healing, healing to those around us. Jesus' ministry was one of restoration and healing. Scripture tells us that Jesus came to offer people a new way of life. He said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. He wanted fullness. He wanted wholeness for all people, restoring them to the persons that they were created to be. Although most of the healing stories that we see throughout the Gospels include a physical healing, the focus is not only on this. Jesus restored people to wholeness. He reconciled people to their communities. He reconciled relationships. During Jesus' time on earth, he called his 12 disciples. He called them to join him in this ministry, and he sent them out two by two, we read in Scripture. And he gave them authority over unclean spirits. They cast out many demons. They anointed people with oil who were sick, and they cured them. And as Jesus was preparing for his death, he instructed his disciples to continue the work that he had begun. And he gave them the promise of the Holy Spirit to enable them to go and to carry out his legacy of love. Throughout the book of Acts, we read many stories, many stories of healings that were done by Jesus' disciples. The disciples made it known that they themselves were not to the ones who did the healing, but that it was Christ working through them. It was Christ who healed. The ministry of healing in the name of Jesus Christ continued beyond Jesus' original 12 disciples. The classical description of healing in the early church is what we see recorded in today's lesson from the book of James. Prayer is clearly 
clearly a priority here. It's mentioned four times. The word prayer is mentioned four times within those eight verses that I read. And so is anointing. Anointing. This prayer for healing is, is a corporate act. It means it's meant to be done in community. It's not done in isolation. It's done in community. The root word of healing in, in the Greek language is sozo, and it has the same root as the word salvation, and it also has the same root as the word wholeness. We live in a broken world where we have broken bodies and divided families and divided communities. And through healing, God seeks to bring reconciliation between God and humanity, among individuals and whole communities, even within each individual, and between humanity and creation. Spiritual healing offers us some balance. It offers us harmony of body, mind, spirit, and relationships. Healing takes on many forms, and it does not necessarily mean it brings about a cure. It doesn't necessarily mean there's a cure. Now, cures happen in a variety of contexts. They don't always turn out in the way that we had hoped or anticipated. But even though a specific cure may not happen, other kinds of healing can be experienced. Hope replaces fear. Resentments replace um, other things. They just kind of melt away. Our sins are forgiven. Our guilt is really erased. Broken lives are mended. The inner peace of God is present. God does not promise that human beings will be cured of illnesses. We all have to face that inevitability of death. God doesn't also promise that we will be spared in our suffering. But God does promise. God does promise to be present with us in the midst of our suffering and our pain. Healing isn't just a physical thing. All people have some form of brokenness in their lives, and therefore we're all in need of healing, whether it's physical or emotional or spiritual or relational. Our, our past experiences of hurt, our tangled up emotions, our inability to forgive or to be forgiven, all of those things make us less than whole and in need of healing. The ministry of healing in the church recognizes that all healing comes from God. The one who prays and anoints is a channel of healing, but the healing is from God. It's also important to, to keep in mind that the prayer itself isn't the thing that heals, but that prayer connects us with God, who is the source of our health and wholeness. Healing isn't some kind of magic, neither is the anointing oil. It's not some kind of magic potion. Oil has traditionally been used as a healing agent. Jesus instructed his disciples to anoint with oil as they prayed for healing. And this scripture in James is very clear in its call for the elders of the church to anoint the sick with oil. But the, the oil, the oil doesn't do the healing either. The oil reminds us of the healing presence of Christ. Healing is a gift from God. Praying for it doesn't mean that we reject the work of medicine and all the advances that have been made in medicine over the years. All of those things are also a gift from God. The church's healing ministry is meant to complement 
the work of medicine. It's not a substitute for medical care or for the proper care of one's physical being, but it does add to all of our resources for healing. And it recognizes that healing comes in many forms. In essence, the ministry of the church, the church ministry of healing, is concerned with wholeness. <laughs> wholeness rather than a cure. Wholeness of mind, body, spirit, and relationships. And so today, we are going to have some healing prayer. Hal is going to play the organ. And if you feel led in your spirit to come forward to receive prayer and anointing, you may do that. If you wish to remain in your seat, you may do that too. We invite you to be in prayer for each other, for the people on our prayer list, for the communities around the world that are in need of restoration, particularly those in the South who've been affected by the hurricane. This is a time of healing, a reminder of Christ's presence with us, a reminder that Christ <laughs> doesn't guarantee that we will be cured, but that Christ will be with us through the journey. And so I'm going to pray over the oil and then invite you to come and receive prayer as your spirit leads you. Let us pray. O oh God, who is the giver of health and life, we thank you for this gift of oil. May those who receive it be embraced by your love, strengthened by your spirit, and restored to wholeness. Amen.